if i want to come out of the book forcefully without completing the book if i want to come out so i will be using the break statement suppose if i had the break statement here what happens so first time it will go it will print the a value then after that it will come out of the loop i have the keyword called written so with the help of that keyword i will be able to return some value when it comes to jump statement so it has got three things the first one that i have is written second one is all about the break and the third one is all about the continue Hello everyone I welcome all of you to the second session on decision making and looping so my dear students i have done one more session on this so if you have not watched that i request all of you to go back and check the session 1 in that i have discussed what exactly while loop do while and a for loop is all about and a very important thing to all of you suppose if you have not subscribed to our channel please don't forget to click on the bell button below and after watching my session if you find it it's interesting and it is useful to all of you so please don't forget to click on the like button too all right so by saying this let me take you to the session what are that i have in this session so guys i have two important things so please remember so the first thing the first thing that i have here is jumps in loops all right and also i will be discussing about labeled loops we have two important things jumps in loops and labeled loops what exactly the meaning of jumps so how many different things that i will have in the jumps so let's discuss that in detail so guys observe here so when it comes to the jump statement basically i have got three important things the first one that i have is written the second one that i have is break and the last one that i have is continue this is very important that you need to understand when it comes to the jump statement so it has got three things the first one that i have is written second one is all about the break and the third one is all about the continue let's understand what exactly each statement is doing so let's understand one by one so what is the first one that i have please observe the first statement that i have here is break let me tell you an example before i come to this topic imagine i have the book i have been giving this example in all my classes uh whenever it comes to the break uh, topic all right so let's understand this i have the book book contains a lot of sheets listen to me carefully imagination is very very important my dear students i have the book in that book i have a lot of sheets now i will call this book as a block or a loop compare my book to the loop so in that loop okay in that book book is equal to loop now in my example so in that book i have the sheets i will compare the sheets to the iterations i will compare the sheets to the iterations so fine so you understood one thing in the example book is equal to loop iterations is equal to sheets fine if i want to come out of the book forcefully i repeat if i want to come out of the book forcefully without completing the book if i want to come out so i will be using the break statement i will be using the break statement now hope you understood why i am exactly using the break so why do i use break if i want to come out of the loop forcefully i will be using what break statement so fine you understood the break statement then why do i have continue then i have the continue statement to come out or to skip one sheet one sheet in the sense what iterations i will be skipping one iteration so if i use continue statement i will skip one iteration that's what you need to remember with respect to the break and with respect to the continue so hope you understood this let me show you the syntax for the break as well as the continue so guys this is a simple uh, syntax or the program that i have taken to explain how exactly the break statement is working say for example i have the while loop okay in the while loop i would have given the break statement here all right so what happens here whenever i encounter the break statement so i will not i will not continue the 
looping. I will not continue the process of looping. I will just come out of the loop and I will start the I will start executing the statements which is outside the block or which is outside the loop. That is what you need to remember. This is an example which is in the while loop. In the same way, I will also use it in the for loop. I will also use it in the do while. Wherever you are using, suppose if I use or if I encounter the break statement, what happens? So it will skip or it will come out of the loop. Please observe, it is coming out of the loop. So this is the loop part, right? This is the loop part. If I encounter the break, so it is coming out of the loop. That's what you need to remember. So again here, so this is coming out of the loop and it is starting, it is started executing the statement which is outside the loop. That's what you need to remember with respect to the break. So fine, what is the thing with respect to the continue then? Let's check that. So guys, as I told you, continue. Continue is used to skip one iteration. One iteration in the sense what? One loop will have a lot of iteration. Depends on your count condition or depends on your count. It will have a lot of iteration. If you want to skip that particular iteration, whenever you encounter that continue, say for example, I have uh, the continue, right? Say what happens is, what happens now? If I encounter the continue, what happens? I will not execute this statement. So I will go to the beginning of the loop. What is that I'm doing? So I had to execute this statement, right? After executing this statement, I had to execute this, but I'm not executing the rest of the statements, what I have after continue. So it is going to the next iteration. It is skipping the statements, whatever I have after the continue statement. So it is skipping that and it is going back to the next iteration. That's what you need to observe here. Say for example, I have the body of the loop. This is the body of the loop. I have executed this statement. Then after that, I will come to this one. So if the condition is true, I will come inside. If the condition is true, I will come inside. So what is that I have? I have continue. So what should I do? Generally, if I don't have continue, after executing all the statements, I will come to this statement and execute. But what happens here? I have the continue. Continue will be redirecting it to the beginning of the loop again. So for the next iteration, that's what you need to observe. The same thing with the for loop and same thing with the while loop. That's what you need to observe here. So what is that I have to use? You have to use a keyword called continue with the semicolon. The same way, same thing happens with a break also. So please observe, I'm using the keyword break with a semicolon. All right, the same thing with a continue also. That's what I have depicted with the syntax. You can use it in any of the loops. You can use it in the while loop or you can use it in the do while or you can also use it in the for loop. So there is no difference in that, all right? So it is just going to the next iteration by skipping the statements, whatever you have after continue, that's what you need to remember. So fine, moving on to the next one, I have written statements. When I have the written statement, it's important that you need to understand function should be able to return the value or it cannot return the value. There'll be two possibilities. So how do I return? That is a question now. So I have the keyword called written. I have the keyword called written. So with the help of that keyword, I will be able to return some value if I am returning some value from that particular function. That's what you need to remember. When it comes to return, you need to please make a note of it. We have two types of written statement, written with some value, written without some value. That's what you need to remember. Is it? No, you will not be returning any value. That's what you need to remember. That's all about the written statement. You need to remember two types of written statement. So fine. When it comes to the written statement, you also should understand you have two possibilities. You can return one value. You can return one value. Say for example, I'm using the keyword written, all right? I'm using the keyword written. So what happens here? You can return the value that is constant. You can return the variable. So if for example, I can write like this. This is a variable, all right? So I can write like this. You can return the expression. You can return the expression. Expression in the sense what? So A into A, all right? So this is what I will call it as expression. You can return the value, return four, return zero, return one. Okay, that is what I will call it as a value. So this is expression. You can also return variable. You can also return a variable. So this is a variable, right? This is a variable. So this is the different ways 
that you can return the values. And also there is a provision, you can try and let me know in the comment box, can you, this is a question that I'm uh, throwing to all of you. So guys, I want you all to be very experimental. You have to think innovatively. Can I return multiple values with this return statement? That's what you need to think. You need to experiment. You need to write the code, check and let me know. All right. Can I return the multiple values? All right. So that's a question to all of you. All right. So you understood uh, the different ways that I can return the values and I have to use a keyword called return. Then what next that I have? I have labeled loops. What exactly labeled loops? We have uh, this topic with respect to the loops. Labeled loop in the sense, please understand we have given the label to a block of statements in Java. Say for example, for this block, I have to go to directly to this block. Label in the sense what you are giving the name. So for this block, I'm just giving the name. That's what I will call it as a label. So loop one is a label that I've given here. Say for example, I'll give KSK. What is the meaning of KSK? Kaushik Super King. So it's like now CSK, Chennai Super King, we have Kaushik Super King. Is that? No, Kaushik KS. All right. So fine, guys, uh, you need to <laughs> jokes apart. So what is this KSK? So KSK is a label that I am giving for this block, I'm not giving the, I'm not giving the label for one statement. You would have studied the labels for one particular statement, but so this is a new concept that you need to remember for this block of code, I'm giving the label. That's what you need to remember, not for one statement. That is a major difference that you need to observe here. For a loop, you can give the label. So that's the concept that you need to remember. So guys, uh, let me explain how exactly the previous topics, what I have explained in the theory, that is break and continue. So please listen to me carefully. It's going to be very interesting for all of you. I will show you how exactly break and continue is working. So let me take an example now. So I've taken the previous program, what I have explained in the previous session. So I have the simple uh, <coughs> program which explains about the while loop. Now, so let me run this program and show you how exactly it is working. So, shift F6. So guys, this is what the output I'm getting if I run this program, how exactly I'm getting. So let me trace this. So I have the variable that is A. A is of type int and I have initialized the value 1 to the A variable. And then I have the while loop. So what are the test conditions that I've given here? I have given A should be less than or equal to 10. So fine. My condition holds good here. So because my A value is one right now, so I can repeat this loop until my A value becomes less than or equal to 10. So fine, my test condition holds good. So I will go inside the loop and I will execute the statements whatever I have inside the block. That's what you need to remember here. So fine, I have system dot or dot println. I'm using that so to do what? So to print the A value. Right now, the A value is one yes or no yes after that i'm incrementing it so after incrementing the a value so again it is going for the checking so it will check is that condition true yes if it is true it will come back to this again the increment will happen so all this process will happen till it reaches 10 then after that it will stop so this is what you need to remember but please observe let me add the twist here okay so what i will do i will just add the break here okay i will just add the break here Suppose if I had the break statement here, what happens? So first time it will go, it will print the A value. Then after that, it will come out of the loop. It will come out of the loop. So it, it should print only one for me. So let's check how exactly it is working. So how exactly the break is working. Let me show you the output. So guys, able to see the output? So that's what you need to remember. So after this, after the execution of this statement, it is encountering break. So it is coming out of the loop and it is executing the statement. So it is not incrementing the A value at all. It's not repeating the loop at all. That's what you need to remember with respect to the break. So fine. The next one that I have is like, you know, do while. Let me show you the do while first before I go to the continue. All right. So let me show you the output of do while. So I have uh, the output here. So fine. Even the do while is performing 1 to 10. I'm getting the print like, you know, 1 to 10. So hope you know this. I have explained the same program in my 
previous class. Let me add the continuous statement here. So this is going to be crazy guys. I will show you this. How exactly it will work if I add continue here. What happens here? So a is equal to 1. So I don't check any condition here. So I will print a value. Then after that continue. Continue in the sense it, go, it goes to the beginning. Again it will print a value. So 1. The a value is 1. I am not allowing the a value to get incremented at all. And I don't allow it to test the condition also. So these two statements are skipped now. So it will keep on printing 1. So it will go for an infinite loop. So that's what you need to remember with respect to the continue. Now I will show you that. So please look at the output. So 1, 1, 1, 1. It is keep on printing. I am going to crash the system now. <laughs> Alright. So guys this is how the break and continue is working for all of us. So we have come to an end of this session. So please don't forget to watch this session again and wait for the next important sessions. I will be coming up with a lot of interesting topics in the next session too. Thank you. Bye-bye.